Hey guys, how's it going? Cheers back again with episode number 21 of the Spurs career mode. We're into the round of 16 in the Europa League in this one. We've previously knocked out standard Liège and we now have an away trip to Spartak Moscow. A team that's uh, pretty decent actually and a team that are going to be difficult to play against. Obviously we had a convincing win against them in the first leg, beating them 4-0 at home. And we're going to see if we can pick up any more goals against me. Although the tie really is kind of dead in the water considering we had such a large first leg advantage. And as you see, Aaron Miller having a decent shot there, but he was deflected, went out for a corner. And that was kind of the... Uh the story of the most of the game for me to be completely honest they were going to come close here though Wellington's going to get around the goalkeeper it's a poor finish but he did well to get his feet sorted out and uh, get around the goalkeeper and I thought actually Wellington at least on ultimate team Wellington is at uh, Sao Paulo so what he's doing at, uh, at Spartak Moscow on this uh, in the career mode I'm not entirely too sure because and I did use the download latest squads uh, it kind of confused me a little bit but uh, Hugo Lloris makes a great save there not really too sure whether it was going in or going wide but he got down really really well to get down and put it out for a corner they made a change in between uh, the corner and uh, or in between getting the corner and taking it and the deflection is going to go up and well it's fin going to finish that absolutely beautifully Follies it down into the ground with his left foot through the goalkeeper and into the back of the net to give them a 1-0 lead. But, of course, that only makes it 4-1 on aggregate. And if we pick up one, they're going to need five to uh, ensure that they're going to go through to the next round. So uh, I was still pretty confident and uh, perhaps maybe a little bit complacent in this one because I knew that it was extremely unlikely that they were going to be able to get themselves through this tie and into the next round. But they made a change, brought on Lucas Barrios for Willett. And Lucas Barrios obviously used to play for Borussia Dortmund has since obviously moved to Russia, but uh, we came very, very close to getting up an equaliser there. Jan Vertonghen rises superbly from that corner. I was quite disappointed, actually, even though he had the attentions of a defender and the goalkeeper on him, that he wasn't able to put that one into the back of the net. And uh, we're going to come close again. Soldado brings that down beautifully. And uh, unfortunately, I was trying to find the far top corner, and he just kind of kicked it straight. The goalkeeper couldn't quite get the angle on it to get it back across goal. And uh, they were going to pick themselves up a second goal here, attacking late on in the second half. Lucas Barrios, really nice finish. Uh, not the most power on it, but it's just too accurate real pinpoint into that bottom right hand corner and Hugo Lloris despite diving valiantly can't quite get down to it and we are in fact going to lose this game 2-0 but nonetheless we're going to go through 4-2 on aggregate as you can see at the bottom in blue we do go through to the next round of the Europa League into the quarter finals and we'll have to wait and see later on in this episode who we're going to get but as you can see Chelsea are through uh, Wigan actually went through in away goals I think against Udinese obviously Fiorentina are through Lazio are through uh, on the right hand side is us Real Sociedad beat Kuban Krasnodar who were in our group Swansea are through against Galatasaray and CSKA Moscow are through against Stuttgart so still some big teams in there obviously Chelsea probably one of the biggest considering uh, they will have been knocked out of the Champions League and finished third in their group but yet again we have some fixture congestion issues 10 games in the month of April let alone uh, if we actually get through against Mill and beat Lazio in the Europa League we're going to have even more but to start off with 10 games in April mental and I cannot stress enough how bad that is for uh, for maintaining fitness etc and how much EA need to sort their shit out not only is the gameplay a problem for ultimate team the gameplay is fine on career mode it's just the fact that my players are dead in the water every single game because they're playing three games a week all the time so uh, anyway I'm going to not rant about that again I've ranted about that enough in the past few weeks or the past few videos so uh, let's get into the game we got Millwall away in the replay of the FA Cup quarter final now of course they played extremely well against us in the first leg pulling out a nil nil draw at uh, at home in fact we were at the uh, at White Hart Lane and uh, they put in a sterling performance to keep us at bay we come very very close there through Jackson Martinez hitting the post and then the follow up is well saved by their goalkeeper is it David Ford I think their goalkeeper but uh, they were actually going to break inside the box here and it's a decent first cross in I don't really clear the ball properly Nicky Bailey picks it up plays through Steve Morrison and I go with the challenge with Hector Moreno and I wasn't sure at first glance whether I got there or not and you can see from the replay, absolutely nowhere near. Completely wiped him out. And it, it was a definite penalty. So Brad Friedel was up against Steve Morrison. A battle of the ages and uh, a fantastic penalty. Off the bar, Steve Morrison. Up into that top left-hand corner. One of the best penalties I've ever had taken against me. Online or offline. So uh, we went in at half-time. 1-0 down thanks to that penalty. So uh, we're up against it away at the New Den. And uh, Millwall were a strong physical side. Really hard to break down. They put a lot of men behind the ball. Closed down extremely well at all times and uh, Jackson Martinez is going to break through similar to uh, the effort Soldado had in the previous game I'm looking for that far top corner and again can't quite find the right angle on it and it's a comfortable save for the goalkeeper so we move on into the hour mark and it's actually Martin break down the left hand side 
again, they were extremely good at uh, keeping me out and then catching me on the counter-attack. And how is that for a finish, by the way? Steve Morrison with a worldy strike. Absolutely dreamy left foot volley right into that top corner. Got so much elevation on it. Absolute technique of love as well. Standing foot swivel right into the top corner. And we're 2-0 down. A shock lead for Millwall here at home against Tottenham in the quarter-final. So I made my two favourite changes. Guilford Sigurdsson and Jermaine Defoe coming off the bench. And I switched to ultra-attacking to try and catch them uh, on the counter-attack. And try and, you know, just throw bodies forward. And Andros Townsend comes close there. Unfortunately, he gets closed down before he can get a decent effort off. And Ford's going to kick the ball out. You see how many bodies we've got forward. And uh, it's basically route one stuff. A huge kick from the goalkeeper. A flick on. Then a ball over the top. A decent turn. Two defenders run into themselves. And then Steve Morrison's through one-on-one -on -one and picks up his hat-trick in the 74th minute it's Millwall 3 Tottenham Hotspur 0 in the FA Cup I couldn't believe it I just had no words for what was going on and then there, Richard Chaplow is going to break down the right hand side I'm trying to hold him off with Danny Rose who's pretty weak to be fair and they, I wasn't sure here whether they were just time wasting in like the 78th 79th minute or just looking for the right pass but they found a the right pass again it's Steve Morrison cutting inside and sets up Feeney for a tidy finish into an empty goal and I just have no words. I don't know how that happened, honestly. Absolutely no idea. They, You'll see from the stats in a minute. They scored from every single shot that they had on target. We had more chances. The same on target, but obviously Ford was in the better form. Brad Friedel just couldn't keep anything out. And now unfortunately, in the quarterfinals, we go out to a huge deficit in the uh, in the... In the quarter-final, so as, as you can see, Crystal Palace, Southampton, Chelsea, and Millwall progress through to the semi-final. So, understandably, Zerka would probably be absolutely delighted with that, uh, being a Millwall fan. But I am hugely disappointed with that, as uh, I really wanted to win at least uh, one domestic trophy. We got knocked out by Championship sides in both domestic competitions. In fact, of course, we lost to Burnley in the League Cup earlier on in the season. But nonetheless, we're back to action again. Just 48 hours after that game against Millwall, we're back to Europa League football. Three cup games in this particular episode and we got Lazio at home and they too played a perfect away game they were extremely high pressure when I was on the ball sat with 10 men behind the ball at all times whenever I had possession and tried to catch me on the counter-attack as best they could and it was Conco breaking through there to have their effort but uh, again similar with the first shot that they had it was tame and a comfortable save for Hugo Lloris so uh, it was us on the attack this time trying to break them down but you see how many men they have behind the ball a flat back five with four sat in front it's almost impregnable and uh, I'm not sure this is offside as you see from the replay when the ball is played I think they're level I, it may be a matter of millimetres but it's the defender that flicks it on a fantastic finish from Lamella at the far side and um I was extremely disappointed that we weren't able to take a 1-0 lead there. But we're into the second half now. Pirlinho, again, I seem to be trying to go for those shots across the goal. And uh, previously, they have worked quite well. But at the minute, I'm really not finding the sort of form that I need. And uh, performing the sort of... Uh, clinical finishing that I need to make sure that we take a lead in this tie and we get fortunate again Miroslav closer just caught offside just put the ball wide and that was his last involvement in the game as well so disappointing for the German but uh, fortunate for us that it went wide but Ericsson here gets a bit of luck with the uh, the return off the defender I thought just pop it in the top corner mate you've got so much time and space and he smashes it wide I was so disappointed with the amount of chances we had in this game decent opportunities as well and uh, Soldado is going to get the turn here looking for the finesse to the far corner and again it's just wide it's a wasteful chance and uh, we only take a nil nil draw from this particular game so three games in this episode two defeats a draw and no goals from me so uh, understandably I think you can imagine that uh, I turned FIFA 14 off after uh, after playing this particular episode and recording it I thought I am not playing or recording any more FIFA 14 whilst I'm in this bad a run of form so uh, I'm going to have to go and record some more over the next couple of days as I go back into uh, career mode hoping to maybe at least score a goal let alone pick up some victories because we've got a lot of games coming up and it's going to be extremely tough to finish the season on a high but finish the season on, on a high is exactly what I want to do we def desperately need Champions League football if we want a decent amount of money to go into the transfer window next summer and pick up some players to improve the squad as we stand at the minute because we've got decent first team we've We've got decent squad depth, but not necessarily a lot of quality in depth. We've got players like Cole Norton and Danny Rose. 
and uh, players like that just kind of sat there fulfilling the uh, the roles as the uh, kind of reserve players and I want some true quality because we're having a lot of rotation so it's not as if those players aren't getting first team football they are getting enough football enough football to keep uh, perhaps a, a, a better player still happy and his morale high so I'm going to look to try and get some real quality in during the summer hopefully so we'll have to wait and see how that goes but that is going to bring this particular episode to a close guys so please do feel free to leave the video a like if you could be so kind if you want to subscribe to the channel already feel free to do so there will be a link in the description and an annotation on screen on the end slate and of course if you missed the previous video there will again be an annotation on screen to that in the right hand corner over the play button and feel free to follow me on twitter as well at chesnoy gaming but that is going to wrap it up for me guys so thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time